Bonjour everyone, welcome to Euro Naval 2022. It is awesome to be back after a four year break. There's a lot of new systems on display on the show floor. In our day one video, we will be focusing on new naval platforms such as ships and submarines. But first, let's hear from Admiral Vendier, the Chief of Staff of the French Navy. Admiral, good morning and welcome to Euronaval. Good morning. Good morning. Very happy to be there. Uh, how important is uh, this event for the French uh, Marine National? I think uh, th this uh, salon is arriving at a very important turning point for the French Navy, where uh, the renewal of our forces uh, will be um, strong in the next uh, decade. And so we have a lot of programs to develop on big uh, segments on uh, big areas uh, of our missions and so this uh, salon is arriving at a very very important time. What are your expectations of uh, Euronaval 2022 this week? In fact our expectation is to gather our forces uh, to uh, be focused on, on the future on uh, the uh, good needs we, we need to uh, fulfill uh, and on the uh, rationalizing of the uh, defense effort. Uh, our president, Mr. Macron, told a lot about war economy. And behind this war economy concept, it's for us the ability to uh, have continuous improvement of our platforms, uh, to have uh, rapid updates, uh, uh, new captors, new sensors, uh, new softwares on our platforms. And so uh, it's for us an opportunity to meet everybody uh, here to uh, push these ideas uh, in the range. Admiral Vendier, thank you very much and have a great show. Okay, thank you very much. The highlight of the show, of course, is the PENG, France's next generation aircraft carrier. This is a new model unveiled on the Naval Group booth uh, here at Euronaval 2022. So this aircraft carrier uh, has a length of about 310 meters. A displacement of 75,000 tons and uh, is intended to replace the in-service uh, Charles de Gaulle in the French Navy. The new design uh, changes compared to uh, scale models unveiled uh, last year uh, include modifications to the island. Uh, the shape uh, has changed uh, quite uh, significantly, especially around the bridge area, uh, as well as up mast. Last year it had uh, some kind of cone for the radar. Behind the island, there are two new uh, spots, uh, one for helicopters and another one for uh, maintenance of aircraft on deck. Uh, the other modification uh, compared to the, mod the design last year include uh, changes to the, the EMOLS catapult because this aircraft carrier will feature EMOLS uh, from uh, General Atomics, so the same catapult system. and. Uh, arresting system as on the USS uh, Gerald R. Ford of the US Navy. Uh, so the angle for these EMOs uh, has changed uh, quite a bit. And now they have uh, they, they worked on the, the size of the flight deck in order to accommodate potentially, it's not uh, set in stone yet, but potentially a third uh, EMOs catapult system. There's a significant self-defense suite on board that uh, PANG scale model. A number of uh, CMOD RC uh, turrets to launch a Mistral short range to fast to air missile. The rapid fire, uh, the new uh, naval gun system by uh, Nexter and Thales. A number of uh, anti torpedo decoy launchers, so those are the new launcher by uh, Naval Group to deploy the Kanto decoy. And of course, a number of uh, VLS system to deploy Aster 15 or Aster 30 uh, medium and long range fast to air missiles. The aircraft carrier will be able to accommodate about uh, 30 aircraft, uh, Rafale M initially, and a future uh, new generation fighter currently in development between uh, France and Germany, even though that program is, uh, is not uh, do doing uh, so well as, uh, as you may know. In service date is expected to be 2038 uh, in order to replace the, the Charles de Gaulle with the French Navy. French shield builder OCA unveils the OSV 315. It is a full aluminium, 95 meters in length uh, vessel dedicated to hydrographic as well as seabed warfare missions. 
It is one of the candidates for the French Navy uh, SHOF program, calling for new hydrographic and seabed warfare vessels. Crew of comfort for this vessel was paramount at OCEA because uh, there are three stabilization systems in order to improve uh, crew comfort. Through it, uh, the, the crew, part of the crew will be uh, scientists uh, to analyze the data. Uh, so it has uh, active stabilization systems, passive stabilization systems, and inside the hull uh, there's also uh, an active stabilization system uh, mounted on rails uh, so that the, the platform is very stable even in a very high sea states. One of the other key characteristics of the uh, OSV 315 is that it can accommodate a large number of uh, unmanned systems. Amidship, below the helicopter uh, deck, uh, there's a large uh, multi-mission bay uh, with several uh, launch and recovery systems that can accommodate launch and recover uh, various size of uh, USVs, UUVs, uh, etc. There's a large area at the stern, again, with a uh, with a crane to launch and recover uh, unmanned systems. And the propulsion system is full electric with two pods. BAE System launched this new frigate design today and I'm on their booth to find out more. The adaptable strike frigate has been quite uh, exciting for us. We've looked at the UK Type 32 program and we've looked at the requirements that are emerging and we've looked uh, specifically at the technologies that we think will underpin that requirement and how we can learn from exploring these technologies and how that impacts future warship design. Uh, and that particularly has left to, led to our design concept for the adaptable strike frigate. Um, it's a uh, quite a different ship. So we've started with the front end of it, you'll recognize looks very traditional. It's when you come to the rear of the ship that things start to get interesting. We've designed the ship to be able to operate with uh, a variety of different systems. So rather than start with role specifics, which would define a particular hull form uh, and define a particular uh, volume of capability that you define your size, weight and power of your systems, we've started with the systems outwards looking in. So we've looked at what do you require for the self-defense components. We've then looked at how do you exploit uncrewed systems data from disaggregated information sources. And also looked at how you containerize some of these capabilities to deliver modular changes in role through movement of containers through the actual operation of a ship that's persistently forward deployed. It's able to handle in excess of 20 containers we looked at the most challenging uh, containerized capabilities, which largely sit around mine countermeasures. Um, and then we designed the ship to be able to deal with that. Can you accommodate uh, modular ecosystems such as uh, Navy pods in the UK or SH Defense, the cube concept from uh, Denmark? So we've worked with uh, SH Defense, uh, particularly looking at the cube about how you would handle the containers on board the ship. Uh, we've also worked with Konsberg to look at how you would handle the launch and recovery of uncrewed systems from the boat bay. Uh, we've exploited some of our learnings uh, from what we've found in building the Type 26 and how that mission bay will be exploitable. Uh, we've looked in terms of MCM capability at what would be the most complex to be required to launch. And I've worked with Atlas uh, Electronic looking at their minesweeping systems delivered from autonomous boats and how those could be launched from the ship itself, which has led us to look at the stern ramp uh, where we've worked with Palfinger uh, to basically enable that USV launch and recovery from internally within the ship, but also able to be changed out should you wish to launch uh, an extra large AUV, uh, such of our, as our Hearn concept that we'll be introducing here today. So Hearn XLAUV is the uh, bringing together of a range of capabilities across BAE portfolio from uh, autonomy to communications, data processing, power and propulsion uh, and bringing it together into a new format and concept around XLAUV with the uh, intention being to be able to provide uh, additional capability to end users and navies around the world for missions such as uh, ISR, anti-submarine warfare uh, and seabed infrastructure protection.
Pink and Thierry Naval Group and Avantia uh, signed today a preliminary collaboration agreement for the EPC European Patrol Corvette program. The goal of this agreement is to maximize synergies and collaborations among European shipbuilders. The EPC will be a smart, innovative, affordable, sustainable, interoperable and flexible vessel designed to meet a wide range of future missions in a continuously evolving global context.